Hello, I'm Mark McGee. I'm, uh, I'm just a little bit of everything, but I've had to slowly educate myself from time to time. Uh, I'm recently from Ozark, and I've moved up from St. Paul and got to know all the people up there. And through conversations in living rooms, uh, and of course I'm an equipment operator, been with this construction company for about 15 years, lived here in Fayetteville, and I've been back and forth. So I find myself observing things, uh, especially when I get rained out. It's freedom, I can go. Well, it seems like it takes a little while for me, I don't know what your destinations are, where you go when you have time off to go to, go, go to places, but uh, you observe things because you, when you're working construction, as I do, you observe the silk fences, you see the slackers, you see what uh, is done when you have different projects everywhere and you know that everything is safety first, get the silk fences up, and, and, but yet when you are like me, you love the outdoors, we all hike, we all take time to look around, and we notice the water off of our roof, on the roads, the roads falling apart, the construction part, especially for me, you see this all add up when you have uh, areas where there's a lot of heavy pressure on highways. <clears throat> and usually whenever there's a lot of heavy rains in the spring, like this last year we had a lot of uh, rain and the whole watershed was soaked and you still had traffic and you still had uh, heavy loads of either loggers or poultry trucks or just general traffic to where the shoulders start falling apart. And you notice that, especially from my point of view. And I'm grateful that I've educated myself and had others tell me to get input, which I could pass on to them. <coughs> so why I'm here at this moment now is uh, the area in this part of the state, this watershed, is falling apart because we have laws that are not imposed. And it takes people just like us who observe and listen and try to follow through by education. We need to do music, sitting, books. We got we got the village is full of knowledge. And that's what I've had to do. And even through my trade, I see that it's not working and it's and it's not gonna work until something happens exactly such as what David spoke of earlier. When you have a contractor who gets the low bid, well, that's the quality work you're gonna get. When you have too many construction companies spreading themselves thin trying to, to keep their crews going to where they can, uh, until they can possibly retire, you know, work towards retirement, and you have smaller crews that are doing the work. So, it's a, it's a, big process and I, I, I observe that, especially like I mentioned just a minute ago about David's project you know, on the mulberry, when you have a contractor that takes on something that Mother Nature has, uh, you know, when it happens and it rains, well you have all the sediment and it goes. Well, I hope that everyone can, can take heed and observe these sort of things and, and see what it's all happening in this big fish bubble. And, and so, anyway, I, I want to thank you and all these other people and all the information that's been put together in its regulations. They can be cleared up. There's some things that, that affect me and everybody else. And I want to take time to look at the regulations a lot more clearly because there's some catch 22s in some of this. And if I can think of it, I'll continue putting input. But, uh, uh, it just has to, uh, we have to take control of it or else it's just going to be running away, you know, and not, uh, you know, the uh, one more item is that I wanted to bring up is my father. He has one of the very few permits to put sewer sludge on the property. Well, he's in control of it. Uh, my other two brothers, we, we have decided we don't want it. We don't want any more sludge. They send a report every month exactly all the minerals and metals and everything that's in it. And uh, it's just disgusting. But yet, if we were not to have it on our property, it would go to somebody else who would have a permit. But until you see those records, and now I'm sure there's a certain, certain percentage of this stuff that's uh, usually safe, I suppose. 
but uh, when you have cattle who are eating the grass off of it, and it goes into the meat, and it goes into us, it goes into the water, you just see the big picture. So I'm slowly educating myself, and uh, as I get older and, and uh, I read, uh, I hope I can pass it on to others. But I just want to let you know where I'm at, and I'll try to do my part, and I hope everybody can do their part too.